Hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host today, Kevin Stafford. And today I have with me Brian McDonald. I'll read a little bit of his bio. There's a lot there, so I'll keep it short, I promise. <laughs> Brian has spent his whole 20-year career in new revenue growth and focused on a superior sales strategy that has created a track, re- tra- track record of success by, and I like this part, I stumbled over those first words because I love this part so much, by serving more than selling people. Mm. And I love that dichotomy. And I think maybe we'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. He's a partner at On Purpose Growth, a coaching and consulting firm that serves entrepreneurs who have ambitious yearly or multi-year revenue goals to fulfill that ambition. Brian, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome being here. I think it's really a great intro and I'm excited to be here and excited to, to have this conversation. Well, let's, let's begin at the beginning, as I like to sometimes say. <clears throat> what got you into coaching? I mean, obviously you've been into coaching for most of your adult life, but what really prompted you to move into this business and to stay with it for so long? So, you know, being in sales my whole career, you know, early on when I didn't have a coaching business, I did a lot of referral business and my network always used to ask me about, you know, how I was getting into places, how I was handling sales conversations. And people were asking me like, Hey, let me, you know, let me grab, grab, buy a lunch or buy a drink or buy a breakfast or buy a coffee. And, and, kind of explain to me how you did that. So I was just doing some like coaching on the fly. I well, actually was just sharing, you know, with my network. And finally, there was a, a friend of mine who uh, had come to me and said, Hey, I'm, I'm in commercial banking. I don't want to be in commercial banking anymore. I want to be in the investment world. Will you help me make that switch? And I said, yeah. So I would meet him. He was my very first coaching client. I would meet him for lunch at his office. And in the first six months of him being in, in, the, in the trades or in financial services, he was top three in every metric that they kept and on a path to make a half a million dollars. I mean, he, he did a lot of work, right? It wasn't on me. Definitely not on me. But I was like, hey, this doesn't feel like work. He got, he got really good results and this is fun. So soon after that, we started On Purpose Growth. It's, it's, I keep coming back to this every time I think about it, the st- all these, all these foundation stories, all these origin stories are so familiar. There's just people who want, who people who ask you, they want to pick your brain. They're like, could you, can it be a sounding board? Maybe they want to talk something out with you. Maybe they want mm-hmm. some advice. Maybe they've just seen you be successful. And they're like, how can I get some of that? And then that desire mm-hmm. to serve that desire to help. Like you, you're also yep. hitting on that too, where it's, he immediately, like almost immediately got into great success and mm-hmm. you imme- and your first instinct was he did the work. I just helped. And just the way you're immediately oh. the way that coaching brain works. It's just, I, I always, I don't, I wouldn't say I marvel at it, but I'm always impressed and just delighted by it because it's, it's such a servant mindset. And that's just, I love to hear about it. I love seeing it. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, that's, kind of what you said in the intro there is, you know, I'm out to, in in regards to sales and revenue growth, I'm out to change the narrative that um, people in a selling situation, specifically entrepreneurs are, are not sleazy salespeople, that they're, they're actually there to help. And there's a bunch of different dynamics that we're going to have to change uh, to, to make that happen. And I'm going to make the impact that I'm going to make. It's, I don't think it's going to change the world, but I'm definitely going to put it in, in, shooting in a different direction. Piece at a time. That's the work. <laughs> mm-hmm. So speaking of that, let's talk about what you do in your coaching practice and your coaching business. What would you say, and I like to throw this term out there, to be interpreted as you see it. What would you say is unique or spe- maybe special might be a better word, but what would you say is unique about your approach to coaching and your coaching practice today? Uh, for context, almost solely got very few actual salespeople as clients. Everybody's an entrepreneur. So it's helping them become the people who they desire to be, because there's, in my perspective, it's as much as about personal growth as it is about uh, developing sales school skills and sales mindsets. So it's helping develop the, the full person. And I've pulled in some things that I've done from personal development, leadership growth training, and taken them kind of these leadership principles and converted them into sales strategies that uh, allow people to communicate on a a more effective and productive basis. Because I really see sales not as tricks or tips, as when you learn how to communicate and help other people communicate in a superior way, you create results. 
I like that approach because a lot, a lot of people they'll try to teach you like I like the tips and tricks. It's sort of outside in approach where it's like learn how to do these things <clears> to become a better salesperson. Whereas your approach and an approach I'm finding more common these days, but still relatively rare, is more of an inside out where you work on the person, mm-hmm. and then things that the things that you need to learn, the things that you need to become, just naturally flow out of working on yourself and having someone help you work on yourself like that. It seems to be, I'm I'm very optimistic about that, although I might be, you know, sort of on the sunnier side of things, but very optimistic yeah, yeah. About heading in that direction. And you're, I, I, I like seeing you as an example of that. It's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and it, I've just noticed that, you know, I help people solve the problems that they want, that they come to me for, right? Say, hey, I don't know how to think about sales strategy. I don't know how to build a sales process. I don't know how to interact. And invariably, yes, we solve those. But along the way, it's helping remove the things that how do I say this, helping them get out of their own way. And those things aren't necessarily sales related, right? They're, they're attached to it, but they're not specifically sales related. As I, I'm, I'm sort of tangentially reminded of that classic, I'll probably, I'll probably butcher it. I've, I've gotten it backwards so many times. The uh, bring a man to fish and he'll eat for a night, teach a man to fish and he'll eat for the rest of his life. It's more yeah yep, right exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah well it, 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 as as right as I understand it so <laughs> we we chatted a little bit before I hit record about well about basically about how successful you've been <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about time which is a conversation that I, I I'm I find myself having more and more frequently with mm-hmm. more and more people in the business especially coaches so you're successful you've got a lot going on what are what are some of your like which favorite ways to I don't like I don't like the the term efficiency, although I use it a lot, but maybe, maybe how do you create more time in your day? Like how did you have outsourcing? Do you have standards and processes in place that allow you to do so accomplish many goals with one, with one effort, almost like, I don't know, like say this, you know, this podcast, you know, we're going to put it yeah. on our podcast feed and, you know, it'll be up on our website, you know, yada, yada. If this were a video podcast, which it's not for you listeners mm-hmm. out there, don't go look it on our YouTube channel. But if it were, you'll see a <laughs> lot of people who will have a video podcast like this go up on their YouTube channel, yada, yada, yada. So what are some ways that you are seeking to, or planning to, or already are saving and creating time for yourself? You know, I, I think all the things that you listed were great. And I think there's a, uh, a principle that comes prior to it. Mm. And that's prioritizing what's most important and, and, and figuring out that and getting those things done because a bunch of other things fall into place. Because so for instance, like if I, uh, let's say I've got a bunch of tasks that I'm doing that that maybe I could offload to an assistant or create a process around that. What I've noticed is a lot of people, they, they know that has to happen, but they're still stuck in kind of activity mode mm-hmm. because they're not prioritizing to get that done to open up more time so they can figure out how to prioritize better. It's one thing that I, in regards to entrepreneurs, is I tell them is one of the ways we're going to solve one of your sales issues is we're going to help you spend more time with the right people and less time with the wrong. And that's, that's prioritization in, in, a, in a silo, right? In that silo. So I think it's understanding what's, you know, uh, different ways to prioritize things and focusing on highly prioritized or highly leveraged activities. And then on the, the other things that ultimately could not matter or don't matter as much. I love that. I love that. And it's, again, it's something that I, I know to be correct, but always struggle with taking that. And I, I usually boil it down to a, a quality versus a quantity versus quality measurement. Mm-hmm. Where it's mm-hmm. like, I can't, I can't create more time. I'm not a wizard <laughs> or a time traveler, mm-hmm. but what I can do, what I have tremendous power over is where and how I choose to spend that time and with who on who working with who on what. And then that um, I was actually having a conversation recently with a, a coworker of mine about delegation and some of the challenges there, where mm-hmm. like there are certain things that you know need to be done that you don't like to do. And so those mm-hmm. can be those can still be challenging to delegate, especially for an entrepreneur when you have to when you when you're starting something out, you have to learn how to do everything. It can be hard to have to hold something tightly enough to get it done and then release it when the time comes to someone else who might be better suited to that. So there's that delegation of tasks that maybe you, you know, you're good at, but maybe you don't like, but then there's the stuff that you love doing, but that takes up a lot of your time. 
And you have to really mm-hmm. sit back. And that's, a, a, I think that's where a coach can come in tremendously handy is someone to just look at what you're doing and say, you know, I see that you love doing this, but could you be doing something more impactful for your business with that time? You spend a lot of time on this. Let's talk about that. And usually in that conversation, the truth comes out and it's something mm-hmm. that they could delegate or, you know, build a process around, but they just like doing it themselves. And so identifying things like that, it's, I find it to be tremendously powerful. And it sounds like you do too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and one thing over the past year that I've gotten access to or known that's there uh, is something called the wealth dynamics test. It's, it's kind of like, a, this is my interpretation, right? It's, it's like a, a personality test, like a disc or something like that. But I believe it's specifically for entrepreneurs. And what it does is it, it tells you kind of where your genius is, like where you actually sit, where what you do is easy. When you do it, it's easy and it gives you energy. And I've actually learned to prioritize. That's a, like a filter for me to prioritize things because on this test, I'm a, I'm a star with a supporter behind it. So star means uh, being on podcasts, being in front of the room, being on stage, kind of be, you know, building communities. So when I do those things, I do them very effectively and it kind of like time compounds on itself. Yeah. But then these other things, like there's a mechanic part, like, building out processes or building a sales page. I could speak it, but don't go build it because it's just going to take up too much time. Learning tools that help like this wealth dynamics that help me prioritize uh, have been awesome. I like that. I am, I've made a note of that on a little sticky note. And I'm going to do a little research on that because I haven't, I haven't heard of that before, but yeah, it's like the comparison to a disc test where it's just a, a framework to help you see things like that, a tool to help yeah. you see. That's great. Exactly. Well, this time has flown by. We try to keep it short. I think we've already been talking for over 10 minutes. Before we go, where would you like people to find you? Where's your, where's your preferred spot? Website? Do you have a social feed that you're active on? Where do you like to see people? I'm, uh, uh, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. That's where I spend most of my time. And uh, what people can do is, is uh, go to my website and we'll redirect you to, uh, to LinkedIn. Hmm. Or if I create a new place, it'll always direct you to that new place. It's more important. So it's my last name, first name. It's www.mcdonaldbryan, that's Brian with a Y, dot com. And that's probably the best place in a perpetuity for, for people to find me because I always point that to the, the most important place to find me. I love it. I love it. One stop shop. We'll get you where you need to go. One stop shop. <laughs> yep. Well, Brian, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, the audience. I find myself always like, tempted to look around at the audience that I can't see that I know. (laughs) But yes, thank you all so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it.